All right. Today's guest is Rachel Gibbler, and you are in for an amazing episode. Like, absolutely amazing. Cannot wait for you guys to get to know her even more. Rachel is a manifestation and mindset coach. She has an absolutely amazing story. Um, She's been featured in the Female Hustlers and Yahoo News as the top 10 manifestation coaches to watch in 2021. And y'all, she is blowing up with everything that she's doing, making waves and utilizing the power of the subconscious mind to help you manifest your dream life. And she lives that with everything that she does. And the coolest part is her story is absolutely so inspiring. She's very, very real and raw in this episode. I do want to preface this episode and let you know a quick trigger warning before we get started. We are hitting a lot of really um, intense topics with this episode. Um, Like I said, Rachel is super real and open about her story and I think it is important, but I want to let you know we will be talking about death. We're going to be talking about drugs. We're going to be talking about abuse and a lot of other things that might be really hard. Um, But her story is one that I know is going to impact so many of you that will listen to this episode. Be sure to follow her at Rachel Gibbler. Um, The link is in the show notes. And let's go ahead and introduce her. Hey, love. What's up? Welcome to Confidently Uncomfortable. I'm your host, Jago, health and lifestyle coach and not so regal confidence queen. Coming at you with the real, the raw, and of course, the uncomfortable. My mission is to show you that to be confident, it has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect or having it all together and everything to do with you getting uncomfortable and pushing your limits. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. Holy shit. I had to like stop because we were already diving in this episode with our amazing guest. Rachel Gibbler is going to be amazing. Like we were just talking before we started hitting record and I'm like, people need to hear this. Like we need to stop right away and hit record. So I'm so glad that you guys are going to get to hear Rachel Gibbler. She's a great friend of me. We're in a mastermind together. And the more we've gotten to know each other, the more I'm like, this is my soul sister. So you guys are in for a treat today. She is going to really be open and vulnerable. And I want you guys to just be so open with yourself as you're listening to her story. Cause I know that there is someone listening to this right now that can absolutely relate and connect with her in some way. So I'm really looking forward to you guys being able to connect with her today. So Rachel, I'm so glad you're here. How are you doing today? <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so excited to talk to you, to talk to all of your listeners and just really get deep, really get vulnerable. Um, and just really go there. Like I'm so excited to do that. And, um, I cannot wait to dive in. Yes, we are going there today and I'm really excited. So you guys, Rachel Gibbler is a manifestation and mindset coach. Um, and she is doing big things in this space because she is creating a space that is embracing everything, single aspect of who she is. Cause I'm like, we're like down to grab some drinks. We're going to talk more about what that looks like. I feel like we should be drinking while we're recording this. Cause it's about, I know. <laughs> um, but, um, basically like the way that she embodies with her coaching, she absolutely embodies in her life. So I really want you, Rachel, to just talk more, talk a little bit more about yourself and share your story because it is so, so powerful that I just want to take as much time as I can talking about you. (laughs) So tell us. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for this, for this platform. And, um, you know, like Jordan mentioned, I am a mindset and manifestation coach. Everything that I do is based in um, principles of mindset and also spirituality, but I do it a lot differently than I'd say most people do it here. And um, I really tried to create a space that um, I didn't see before, right? And, and a space that is really welcoming to all women. And um, in order to really talk about how I got here, um, it's super important imperative that we talk about my story and where it all started. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, one of my biggest missions on this planet is to allow women to see the possibilities for themselves, no matter where they came from, no matter what they've done in their past, no matter what shame that they've ever felt. Um, and really represent those women that didn't have it all together and maybe still don't and know (laughs) that they can still be successful. So, um, you know, where this story kind of starts is um, back when I was 16 years old. So um, background about me is I uh, grew up in a wonderful, wonderful, supportive family. Um, I was an only child with two parents and a grandmother that uh, lived with us as well. So I essentially had three parents, Love it. Um, just always there, always just incredible. And 
Um, I really was able to flourish in my childhood, which is amazing. Um, but that all turned upside down when I was 16 years old. So um, one day, my junior year of high school, my father was in a freak accident. And um, he was the sole provider for our family. Mm-hmm. And uh, he died um, nearly immediately within 24 hours upon impact. So um, it was the most traumatic thing I have ever experienced to date. And it flipped my entire world upside down. So, you know, everything that I knew up until that point unraveled for me. And I tried to keep it all together, right, for my mom. And um, we ended up moving. We ended up, you know, my grandma ended up leaving and living with my aunt. So I went really from three parents to one that was entirely broken, Mm -hmm. losing the love of her life. And um, I essentially spent my senior year of high school just alone and confused and angry. And at that time, I, you know, had no basis for a belief system outside of myself. Mm -hmm. So I was not spiritual at this time. I was not raised religious. I had no, um, I, I really had no framework to believe beyond what was in my current reality. So that caused me to spiral downward and just be very, very angry at the world. Um, And the way that that manifested, I went off to college and, you know, I pretended that everything was okay on the outside, right? I still had good grades. I still was technically a good kid, right? Um, If you were to view it from the outside, but inside I was entirely broken. I had no identity. I didn't know who I was. And uh, that caused me at the very beginning of college to meet a man who ended up becoming my abuser for four years. Mm. And um, that shift away my self-confidence. I was so ashamed of who I was. I was abusing drugs and alcohol, like Mm. absolutely insane. I look back now and I think how lucky I am to be alive and uh, to not have overdosed, to not have been, um, you know, really to be honest, would be killed by this person. And um, it, it, this went on for years and years until I was about 21 years old. I graduated from college. And uh, luckily, I, I got out of that abusive uh, relationship. I moved from Miami, where I went uh, to school, to Houston, now where I currently live. Um, and my mother lives there as well. Mm-hmm. And I started a corporate job, just like everybody else. Uh, in sales, again, was keeping that mask on, was yeah. trying to just push through all of my pain, all of my brokenness that I had never dealt with. And, um, you know, Monday through Friday, I was crushing it at the office. And on the weekends, I was heavily using drugs. Mm-hmm. And I was hiding it from everybody. And I was so, so, so ashamed of myself. And I had, you know, worked my way up in this company in just a couple of years. And I felt like I was running on a hamster wheel and I could not get off. I felt like I was in a prison and trapped in my own mind, in my own um, brokenness, really. And I had no idea how to get out. I had um, created a container. I created a, a friendships with people that were all based around partying. I had, you know, really, I had known in my soul and in my gut Ever since the moment that my father died, I had a voice come to me. Mm -hmm. And the first time that this happened was when I was sitting next to him in the hospital room as he was pronounced dead. Mm -hmm. And I I told you, Jordan, this was going to get heavy, but I, I, it's so important to me to share this because I know that so many people go through so many hard things and trauma. Um, And I promise the story gets better. So, um, so I had this voice come to me Mm -hmm. and it was so clear. And I swear to this day, the voice was not my own. And I know that sounds wild, but it, it came to me and it said, this won't be all for nothing. Mm. And I heard it. And I, and I knew in that moment that I was going to do something with my life. Mm. And every single time that that boyfriend hit me or I took the drugs I didn't want to take, I'd hear the voice again that would say, this won't be all for nothing. And I would ignore it. And I, but I knew in my gut that one day I was going to come out of this and I was going to share my story. And this all, yeah, I'm like getting emotional when I talk about it because it's so powerful. Powerful. Yeah, I I have chills as well. Um, I, so three and a half years ago now, I will never forget. I, um, I was taking a lot of drugs. It was a weekend and um, I had the voice very clearly and it was like, you need to stop what you're doing, you're going to kill yourself and make something out of this. 
And um, I took the drugs anyway. (laughs) I (laughs) thought, shut up, voice. (laughs) And I did it. And um, that was the turning point for me. And I remember crying to my mother on the phone, um, maybe a, a few weeks after this, and was saying, I just need time. I need time to stop. Like I'm working 80 hours a week. I'm working myself into the ground, barely have any money, no friends around me that aren't doing drugs. I'm stuck. Right. And I was like, I just need time to pause and to stop so I can think. And you guys listening to this, I'm sure that you can resonate with that feeling of like being on that hamster wheel. You know, maybe you weren't (laughs) as deep in the shit as I was, but even just not doing what you know you're meant to be doing, you know, you're made for more, you know, you want to create something out of your life and you have no idea how to get there because you've got a decent job, you have bills to pay, you know, your friends are fine, right? Everything's just fine, Fine. but you're not fulfilled, right? Right. And wanting that time to stop. So now, um, now, as I know, uh, now that I've become spiritual and, and all of that stuff, as, as we know of the universe, your wish is my command, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Um, so shortly after this conversation, um, I was in a freak accident myself. And wow. this now was three years ago, this past December. So slightly over three years ago. And I blew out my knee and um, I ended up having to have emergency surgery. And I was in a cast from my hips to my ankle and I could not walk. And um, I was in a sales role at that time in downtown Houston and had to entertain clients. So I had to take medical leave. I was forced um, to take medical leave for my job. And at this time, I was still this angry, you know, I think I was 23, Mm. angry 23 year old just like, how the fuck could anything get worse? I'm already at my rock bottom. How dare the world do this to me? And I was in so much pain. It was a very, very painful um, accident and surgery and and recovery. I had to move back in with my mother. I had to learn to walk again. And about two weeks into um, this, this recovery journey, it obviously forced me to get sober, which was the, the biggest thing that could have happened, right? Um, I decided laying in bed, I will never forget. I had the voice again and I had this epiphany and I realized I just got everything I asked for. Time got to stop for me. And I decided I can either go on like this and in three months have nothing to show for it. Go back to my job, go back to my friends, go back to this life that I fucking hate. And you know, have wasted this gift, or I can sit here in bed and change my life. And that's exactly what I did. Wow. So <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a really cool story. Um, and it's, I'm really proud of my past self for, for doing that. Um, so I'm somebody that, as you know, Jordan, I tend to rip the bandaid off when I decide. <laughs> I, decide. I love it. So, Jump off the cliff. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it didn't start big. It didn't start knowing where the hell this was going. I literally took my computer in this fleeting moment of faith and I Googled how to be happy. And that's where this all began. And um, I had never found self-development. I had never heard the word manifestation in my life. I didn't (laughs) know any of this stuff. And I found self-development and mindset through that. And I decided to dedicate those three months to getting sober, to learning all I could about successful people, their mindset, the way they thought, the way they move, the way they show up in the world. And I studied people for three months and I watched YouTube. I did interviews. I realized I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Like I I looked at all this stuff. I just absorbed like a sponge, all of this information. Mm -hmm. And I joined my first life coaching program. And, um, you know, from there I went back to my job, um, that, you know, two weeks later, I quit. I walked out yes. the door and I decided <laughs> I'm doing this. I'm becoming an entrepreneur. And that is where I started the Lash Lounge. So um, those of you that are familiar with eyelash extensions, <laughs> I <laughs> actually own, I own two brick and mortar stores in Houston where I live. They're eyelash extension salons. Um, and I decided to start this just, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to work for myself. And yeah. uh, so, you know, I began just going for it, really. Um, I ripped off the bandaid. I left every single friend that I had. Um, I left my relationship and I just chose and, and knew I'm going to be lonely 
for these next few months Mm -hmm. while I transition. And I'm going to always remember this won't be all for nothing. And I just repeated that in my head over and over until it fucking worked. And um, yeah. And then a year into that, I decided to share my story about my abusive relationship. I, at the time, uh, was terrified. I had, I had deleted um, every one of my social media accounts for three years because I was terrified of the man that was abusing me and uh, didn't want him to know where I lived, didn't want him to know anything. Uh, he threatened me quite a bit, um, saying that he would find me, all those things, right? Um, that is just awful. And I decided, you know what? Darkness cannot thrive when you bring it to light. Mm-hmm. And so I decided to reactivate my Instagram and share my story. Mm-hmm. And that now was um, a little over two years ago. Yeah. And that is what turned into coaching. And I really just did it to, I had no intention of being a coach. I didn't know what it was going to turn into. If you guys backstock my page, um, <laughs> if you go to those posts, you'll see, I talk about my abusive relationship. I say, I had no idea what the fuck I'm doing, but I'm here and I'm showing up. And, um, you know, that quickly grew and, and people loved it. And I grew this really engaged community um, by just being vulnerable and talking about my story and just continually showing up. And, and there's a lot more parts to that, right? But oh, yeah, always um, is, <laughs> you know, and, and that's how now I'm here. And now I own three businesses, three companies, they have amazing people around me. Um, yeah. I feel so good about where my life is going. And now I know it's just the beginning. So that's oh. essentially how I got here. <laughs> I love it. Y'all, I knew you were going to enjoy this story because I got chills throughout the entire thing. Um, and there's so much to um, just go back through just because Oh man, so much just resonated with me that I know other people are going to resonate with as well. Um, first of all, when you said, when you started to talk about this voice in your head, it's just, it gave me chills because that is something that's like your guiding light. And, and the fact that in like one of your lowest points mm-hmm. of your life, it, that voice came to you, it's just so, so beautiful. And then also the fact that it never left you. And that's the truth is like, yeah. sometimes there's something calling us and we we ignore it or we try and it, like you said, you were just doing the corporate job. We try and check all the boxes that we feel like we should be doing, but it's going yeah. to come back up. And I think you chose to let it guide you. And that's what a big part of what got you here today, even though there's a long journey to get there. It's just so beautiful that you trusted that. Cause I think there's a lot of people that wouldn't have done that because of the fear of the unknown. Whereas you're like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but let's go. Mm-hmm. And I think that is yeah. something to be said about that. And that you can, trust that voice and just know it's okay to trust it. Even if you don't know the the light at the end of the tunnel, the, the gold at the end of the rainbow, whatever kind of metaphor you want to use mm-hmm. still knowing that this is within me. I know I'm meant for more. Like you just feel yes. it. And I think so mm-hmm. many people feel that, but then because they don't have the A through Z steps that they need to take to get there, they won't follow it. And they'll stay on the yeah. hamster wheel. You know what I mean? They'll stay on that hamster mm-hmm. wheel because it's what everyone else in the world is telling them is a sure thing. So they'll stay on that hamster wheel and then time flies by and then they're they're stuck back exactly where they were. So at this moment, this pivotal moment I want to come back to is when you said you, you were in that accident and you were in this cast and you were like, I had a choice to three months, like make something of this three months or just fuck around and then go back into the corporate world and be exactly where I was. And do you feel mm-hmm. like that was like a big shift for you was just making that decision? Yes, yes, exactly. And, you know, I think it's super important to note those of you listening, that it is not like I had this like epiphany, and it was all better. It was this <laughs> leading moment, this spark of faith, that if I had not taken action within that five second window before I talked myself out of it, then I would not be here today. And, you know, I just, it's so important to note that I did this all through the fear. I was Mm -hmm. absolutely terrified. I didn't have this epiphany and was not scared. And it it was, I was scared through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Every single time I was terrified. I was terrified to quit my job. I was terrified to put myself on the internet and what people were going to say about me. I was terrified to, you know, take on my first coaching plan. Like every single time I have been scared and not known what the fuck I was doing. And you just figure it out as you go and you build that mental muscle of being able to show up through not knowing the steps. We are, you know, in this reality, our society teaches us so much, the steps to get from A to B. You climb the ladder, you get the straight A's, you know, you take the test, 
you study for the test. Like it's there, you know the steps of what you're yep. supposed to do. Then you go to college. Then you get a decent job. Then yep. you get married. Check then the boxes. Get, and it is so that is why it, so many people are unfulfilled because yep. they're not checking in with themselves of what they truly want to do and instead are doing what everybody else expects of them. And so much of my mission in this world is to say, fuck the expectations, yes. fuck the paradigms and, and the patriarchy and everything that they yes. fucking tell us, you know, it has to be. And let's make a stand. Like things aren't going to change until we change them within ourselves. And I think that, you know, also going back to that moment, Jordan, of, mm-hmm. of that, that moment of faith that I had to, to make that Google search. I was at such a rock bottom in my life that I didn't have anything else to lose. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think that that's where a lot of people do get. Like, I was honestly facing, like, if I continue on this path, I'm going to die. And if I, if I do, I, not only is my father's death in vain, I'm also leaving my mother. So I, I have this really big drive to not give a fuck. And even though I did care, but yeah. like I had to drive to, to change because I had truly nothing else to lose. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people do get to that point, but I would urge you, if you're listening to this, don't wait to get <laughs> to your rock, rock bottom mm-hmm. before you have to make a change. Like you don't have to have this grand, big sob story. Like Uh, you know, you can seriously just decide that like, this isn't enough for me. And I want more out of my life and choose to make a different decision. And like, you don't have to wait to get to the lowest of the low to do what I did. Yes. And I think, I think a lot of people struggle with this aspect of like, well, I'm, I'm doing all the things. There's almost a side of guilt, like, oh, but I have a good job. Like you had a corporate job. I have the corporate job. I have the security of a a 401k. I don't know what that is, but a 401k and like, um, all of those things (laughs) I've never been, y'all, I was never a corporate person. I dropped that shit quick and burned the interview clothes (laughs) from the start. I said, I will never work for anyone again. So yeah, I can relate to your story. Never again. (laughs) Never again. Um, so mm-hmm. taking that and recognizing you don't have to be in a rock bottom. I love that you said that. Cause it's true. You don't have to wait until it's rock bottom or wait until you're ready. Cause that's a big thing. You said you had, you, you didn't have this epiphany of everything you had to do. You didn't have all the steps, but you knew you were meant for more. And I think that trust, that spark of faith, you said is enough to get you through because mm-hmm. you will show up. And that's something I tell my clients about confidence is they're like, Oh, you're so confident. It's like your confidence doesn't show up until you do. Like Mm. your your reality is not going to show up until you show up and you act on it. So you made that decision, Mm -hmm. regardless of knowing the full steps, you made that decision and you, you acted on it and you changed things. Last thing with that, that I want to touch on that I think is huge is you said, I'm probably going to need to be probably going to be by myself for the next few months. That's something I want you to hit on. Cause I think a lot of people, there's a fear of like, they're set in these environments. And I talked about this in my last podcast about grounding yourselves and grounding yourself in an environment that's not actually helping you flourish. And so um, if you guys haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen, but you hit on this really well um, where sometimes you're in an environment where it's not the most supportive. So how would you help someone that is feeling that way? Like they're wanting to make a shift, but they feel stuck in an environment that maybe their friends aren't super supportive or their job isn't supportive or spouse, whatever. Like, what would you say to that person, that previous Rachel? (laughs) Sure. Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, with that, that was a huge fear of mine as well, right? And we are wired. I think it, it's important to understand how we're wired as human beings for connection. And that's a huge reason why, like, let yourself off the hook for like why you can't leave, because that is literally like your primitive brain keeping you safe. Um, you know, our brain, we have two brains, right? One that is our conscious brain that makes all these decisions. And then our subconscious mind, which is us primitive, um, you know, that keeps us alive. And it tells you subconsciously that if you lose the pack, that you will die because that was how our brains evolved. Right. And so now I think that for me, I learned that. And I realized like, I let myself off the hook for, um, the ways that I, I, I had not walked away before because so often, you know, we bog ourselves down with not only are we not leaving, but then the shame of not leaving. And then why can't I leave? And all these emotions that are on top of our actions that if you just release yourself from the expectation and understand like, oh, this is just my humanness here. And I can actually consciously make a different decision. And I had this really big limiting belief 
at this time that I could not make friends outside of college. Like I literally thought mm-hmm. like, how do you make friends as an adult? Because we are so wired and so used to you go to school and you are just friends with the people in your proximity. You go to college, you're friends with the people in your proximity. Yep. And then, you know, I went to this job where they, it was sales and it was a lot of young people um, that obviously, you know, kind people, but just not habits that were helping me get to the next level. And um, I just stayed in that little bubble. And so understanding that there is an entire world out there that you can be a part of if you choose to make different decisions. And so I just mentally prepared myself for the fact that I'm going to rip this Band-Aid, right? Because what we know about energy now is like more can't come in if you already are energetically putting things like to, to people or decisions that you don't want to yes. actually attract, right? Like, is it, like if you all have all these friends around that aren't serving you, how do you expect to make more friends if you don't make a different decision? How do you expect to call in more money if you don't make different decisions? Like all of the different things, right? Energetically. Mm-hmm. So I just realized, I didn't know the energetics of that at the time, but I just realized that like, if I'm like logically, if I'm going and still doing the same things, then I'm not going to attract something different. Exactly. So I just literally told myself, this is worth it. This will pay off. I had no idea how I had no idea where these people were going to come from. I had, I never made friends as an adult outside of what was in my proximity. And that was terrifying. It was, it was, it was scary. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's not, but you just have to trust that there's an entire world out there waiting for you if you're willing to go find it. And yeah, I think when you just approach it with some sort of like playful curiosity of like, hmm, what could I do differently? Like I joined different groups. I joined entrepreneur groups. I met one of my best friends who's a Forbes 30 under 30. It was my first ever friend that I was like, holy shit, this person can help me get somewhere. Right. And like, this person is really, really cool. And you'll start to attract those things when you put that out there. And so just do something different, join different groups, go to different different coffee shops don't do the same shit every day and it will you'll slowly start to gain that confidence right by showing up and um you'll start attracting it to you and then you'll realize that it works yes you're so right with the the capacity with our energy is like if you're putting all your energy into things that you don't even want more of you're not gonna be able to bring in the things that you want it's like nothing changes if nothing changes right like yes. you have to change something has got to give and I think I ask my clients that a lot like if you keep going at the rate that you're going, like it's not, it's not going to get any better. You have to, something has to change. And a lot of times we think we need to add on all these new things. And you're, you're a great example of this, of like, I actually needed to rest. I needed to slow mm-hmm. down. First. And I think a lot of us struggle because we get in this hustle mindset of whether they want to grow in their business or they have big dreams in their personal life or whatever. They think that the automatic move is like, I just need to do more. I'm not doing enough. I need mm. to do more. Whereas sometimes it's actually, we need to do less. And you mentioned this, with mm. the I think, releasing, giving ourselves grace and slowing the fuck down are like three mm-hmm. principles that I think people struggle with. So did you feel like those things were a part of your, your process with, with, um, the shift? Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Not only, I mean, every single shift in my life and we can go into to business as well. I have a very good example, um, yeah, with, with the online space, um, with that as well. And we can kind of dive into that there, but think about it as this, like, you, in order to call in different things, yes, you have to make different decisions, but it's never about doing more. It's about doing different. Like you have a finite amount of time and that is the only resource that you have a finite amount of. And so, and, and your, your energy, right? And so you have to clear space to allow other things to come in. If you don't, you will spin your wheels continuously. And I like to think of this as like a slingshot where you have to take a step back, slowly pull yourself back to propel yourself forward. And you actually will go much faster if you do that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to burn yourself out. And you're going to just like, attract all the different things that you don't really want. Like you have to give yourself the permission to slow down, to take the time to be by yourself. All of this work that I've done has been alone. And I was terrified to be alone uh, up until really a couple of years ago when I started doing this work, I hated being by myself because I hated one, I hated myself. And two, I didn't want to be aware of my thoughts 
when I was by myself. Mm -hmm. So I looked at all of the distractions outside of me, whether that was friends, whether that was drugs, whether that was just being like occupied by any fucking thing I could find. Mm -hmm. And so you will be interested if you just sit and don't have any distractions, you'll be so amazed at what comes up for you. And you will be able to actually grow so much faster when you stop avoiding yourself mm -hmm. and, and clear that space for, for you to be. And then you will call in the right thing. Oh, that, that analogy just got me of the slingshot. It's so true. Like slow steps back to slow down. Um, man, I mean, there's just so much goodness there because it's, it's so true with our lives and with things that we're doing in this fear of like, oh, I'm not doing enough or I need to speed up when really you need to slow down. So I'm glad that you shared on that. Mm -hmm. And I think another thing, people are just afraid um, of like, they're not sure where they fit in. Like you said this kind of with mm -hmm. like your story. It's like, well, I'm not interesting enough. Like if they want to start a business or if they want to coach, they're like, I'm not interesting enough. Or if they're trying to fit, like become like start, start doing meditation or start doing stuff. They're like, Oh, I'm not really like that spiritual or like, I, mm. I really enjoy doing these things. And they try and think that they don't fit in. And I, I know that yeah. I've dealt with this personally, like as a fitness coach, it was like, Oh, I'm, I'm too big to be a fitness coach. I'm too small to be in the, like the body positivity movement. So I always felt like I didn't fit in. And I, that's something I really related on with you because you've kind of mentioned the same thing. And I would love for you to share a little bit more about that. Because I think a lot of times yeah. we are trying to make a shift. We're trying to shift into another box when maybe that's not the answer. So I would love for you to share a little bit more about your journey with that. Yeah, this is the perfect like place to now transition into because um, now we can talk a little bit about you know the online space and, and how I've kind of evolved here using that same slingshot analogy. Um, so to tell you a little bit about you know just how this all came to be, how this morphed, um, I dealt with the same thing as you, as once I figured out, okay, I'm, I'm constantly changing my identity, right? Like I went from corporate to being an entrepreneur, a new baby yeah. entrepreneur. Then I went into somebody that shares their story. That was scary. And, you know, when I started um, online two and a half years ago, I started, you know, by just naturally wanting to inspire people, naturally sharing my story, talking about mindset, talking about self-development. But honestly, at that time, I still was dealing with so much behind the scenes of growth and still am. I don't think, you know, as humans, we ever will not be, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I had quickly gotten um, in with some very high level entrepreneurs. I had made some really close connections within probably three to four months of sharing myself online with a lot of coaches. And at the time, I had no framework for, um, you know, for how online business worked. I had no understanding of how you make money. I had no understanding of just like really any of it. Like I was a sponge. And at the time, I was still only a year into my self-development work. I had not yet found spirituality. And so I still was very impressionable with who I was. I was still really trying to find my identity. And I do believe that that is ever evolving. I think that if you're doing your life right, you're a thousand different versions of yourself by the time you go. Yes. Um, and, you know, so I got in with these coaches and beautiful human beings. Awesome. And, and they taught me um, how you make money. They taught me the structure and all this stuff. But then I, you know, I really wanted to empower women to, um, you know, speak about mindset principles, to speak about how you like transition from having the shame and, and, you know, things about your past that feel like they hold you back and talking about how to shift those. But I heard somewhere from some coach that I really looked up to that you can't make money as a mindset coach. Mm -hmm. And so this really spoke into my fear. And um, I was asked, you know, what do people like about your page? What are people asking you? And at the time, everyone was asking me about my social media. I was very good at editing photos. I was very good at um, you know, I, I still am. I love the creative side. I'm a creator. I'm a musician. So I loved, um, I loved that aspect of it. I'm a creative writer. So people were really asking me like, how do you edit your photos? How do you um, do this? Right? How, how do you do that? And it was all like, they were saying I was inspiring, but the main things that they were asking was about my social media presence. Mm -hmm. So I abandoned myself entirely. Mm -hmm. And I switched to social media coaching because I thought that's how I could make money. And I completely abandoned my mission. This was now two years ago at this point. And um, I, you know, what's more is that it, it worked. 
uh, within about two weeks of saying I was a social media coach, I made about $5,000, which I think now looking back, I'm like, wow, that's pretty unheard of. Um, but I, I did. And I was talking about it and it felt like shit mm -hmm. because it was not authentic to me. It was not why I originally did this. I felt like trapped again. And I was like, wait, why, why the hell am I doing this? And I realized, and I'm so grateful that I realized this when I did, that I knew I was going to get to 10K months very quickly, 20K, 30K. And I could see it because of how fast it happened. And I was like, I am going to end up building a business, being reliant on this income, and then hating what I've built and again, being a slave to my job. Yes. And um, so I decided to pull the plug on the whole thing. And I took a step back. I stopped posting and you guys listening, if you do end up following me on Instagram, um, you can go back and you can see where I, I didn't delete anything. Yep. Like you can see where I'm like the four ways to grow your Instagram account. Like so <laughs> inauthentic. I'm, fo I'm following all the caption formulas and following all the things. And it just was not me. And it, mm -hmm. and it felt awful. And so I was very sporadic with my online presence for the first couple of years because I didn't know who I was. And I was committed first and foremost to that voice that said it's all not it's not all for nothing and you're going to make something of your story and i was committed to that and i didn't know how it was going to work or anything right and i'm trying to fit myself going back to these boxes yeah. of okay all right i'm going to take a step back i know social media coaching is not for me still having those limiting beliefs so i'm like all right where do i fit here mm -hmm. and i'm looking at the mindset coaches i'm looking at the life coaches the self development gurus yeah. and i'm like Okay, I start talking about that, but I know that behind the scenes I'm a bit of a hot mess still. <laughs> and I felt inauthentic even talking about those principles because I'm not the buttoned up life coach. I'm not the girl wearing the blazers. I'm not the girl, and not that there's anything wrong with that if that's authentic to you. Yeah. But I was trying to fit myself in a box. I felt like I couldn't have a mindset that ever was, you know, like ever had problems or I felt like I had to like have this perfect mindset in order to be a life coach and that felt stifling and so then I looked for my identity in another place which was I found spirituality yep. and I then was like okay maybe spirituality is my place and I'm you know starting to follow all these spiritual entrepreneurs I'm starting to kind of post about spirituality but I'm not as woo as everybody else I'm like believing in these principles but approaching them with like an inherent skepticism <laughs> and I'm like you know okay what's this about angel numbers what's this and I'm still <laughs> the person that like I believe in all this stuff now only because I've had evidence yep. of seeing it and manifestation and getting into all of that stuff but like you'll see I have crystals all over my house and I tell everybody I'm like I'm a crystal poser I think they're pretty I love them I don't really know why I exactly love they that too <laughs> Literally. And, and at the time I was embarrassed because I'm like, I'm not fully woo. So like, where the hell mm -hmm. do I fit? And in spirituality, everybody, I actually am a vegetarian. I was grown up that way, but like, mm -hmm. or raised that way. But I was like, I, I still take tequila shots sometimes. Like mm -hmm. I still go out. I still like want to be a human and be grounded in reality. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I love the esoteric. So, but like all of these spiritual gurus are so like, you know, it felt like you had to be perfect in that way of like yep. saving the planet and nobody drinks and everybody just, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just like airy fairy thing. And again, if that's you, power to you, sister. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't me. And so again, I was stuck with where the fuck is my identity. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until truly the beginning of this year yeah. that I finally decided I'm stepping into who the fuck I am. And I realized there's a gap with the people, the women that are just like me, yeah. that don't fully, they're not fully woo, but they love these principles. They don't have it all together, but they've, you know, mindset has helped them, mm -hmm. right? And they still want to be successful, but they don't feel perfect. And like, what about those women? And so now I represent the girl that's spiritual as fuck and takes tequila shots, yes. doesn't have it perfect, <laughs> is a hot mess, and can still be wildly successful and have three companies just like me. Absolutely. And all of you is welcome here. And so now that's how I've built my brand. And it's the most authentic and the most excited I have ever felt because it truly is me. But it took 
a long, long time to get here and taking steps back constantly, swallowing my ego, swallowing my pride, restarting over and over and over again until I got to the point. Oh, yes. Oh, I listen. You know, I'm relate to this so much just with the idea of feeling like, oh, I'm not enough, like one or the other. And something that really helped get me through is just this realization that like, it's not my job to fit into a box that someone else created. You know, yeah. that is not my job and it's not our job to be right for everyone either. That's the other thing. Like your people that connect with you are great. And if they're not connecting to because like, oh, I don't drink. That's crazy. Then guess what? That's fine. That is okay. Yeah. And it's not in a way to where you're feeling any animosity towards those people, but no. you're able to be fully authentic in who you are. And that is helping others that are that relate to you to be able to do the same. And I think it's so mm. amazing that you're creating that freedom within yourself to do for others. And, um, because we're not allowed, we're, we're not alive for the purpose of pleasing everyone. We're not alive for the purpose of like doing what we feel like we su- suppose we're supposed to do, or we should do, or acting the way we feel like we should do. And that's one thing that I'm all about, like flipping the script and like breaking up with this idea of perfection, because we mm. get in this idea. And I love that you said this, we're ever evolving humans. And like you said, you don't expect to be the same person you are now or the one later and no one should expect anyone to, but social media is so quick to put us in a box. What's your niche? Where do you fit in? Like, how can I, how can I rate you? Mm -hmm. And I just think that we need more people like you in this industry, in this world, in this space to just like blow that shit up. And so I'm so happy you're here. I'm so glad that I just know you as a human because you're amazing, but you are doing big things. So I'm just so thankful for you. And that's your, your story and your journey to get here. And I'm so thankful that you listen to that voice because yeah. this won't be all for nothing. And it gives me chills yeah. every time I, I, I mm. you say that. So I'm just so thankful that you were here today and open and vulnerable and um, big shit's happening in your life. And I'm so excited. So she is, um, Rachel is launching a podcast this May. So be on the lookout for it. I'm so yes. excited. <laughs> so I would love, um, I'm actually going to do rapid fire questions. I'm going to ask you a question at the end. And um, I would also love for you to share about the podcast. So hang tight. I'm going to throw these rapid fire. She got y'all. She was not prepared for these because I didn't want her to. Let's go. (laughs) So they're they're very random questions. So just go with whatever comes up first. All right. Cool. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's go. (laughs) What is your favorite word? Empowerment. Ooh. Um, Tacos or pizza? Tacos. That is how I knew we were friends, by the way, when you made that answer. Oh, yeah. And hot sauce. (laughs) And hot sauce. Yes. I'm so thankful for you. Um, Okay. Favorite dessert? Oh, okay. I don't eat dessert a lot, but I would have to go with Belgian cream puffs. That's so fucking weird. (laughs) What the fuck? Okay. All right. Cream puffs. All right. This is a weird one. Favorite. That's so weird. Your cream puff. Last thing I would have thought you would have said. I know, such fucking a, cream puff. That's a strange fucking person. All right. Favorite sound. Oh my God. I told you these are weird. What? <laughs> Favorite sound. Okay. Uh, I would have to go with anything that is acoustic, um, like lyrics. Like I'm a musician. And so anything, acoustic guitar, John Mayer type of stuff. That. You just love it. It just brings you in. Oh, not one it. sound, but that's no. I like it. That sounds that counts. It's a category. Okay. okay. Um, cool. And then this last one, that I think can relate to what you're doing now. Your big adventure is. Um, what is one thing? This podcast is called Confidently Uncomfortable. So, like, I help women and talk about just leaning into that discomfort in order to grow, in order to find that that confidence. So, with that in mind, what's the one thing you're working towards in your near future that is going to be a little uncomfortable for you that you're excited about? It's totally the podcast. Fuck yeah. <laughs> totally the podcast and my future mastermind and retreats. Just kind of like Get plug ready. That in there real quick. But um <laughs> Say it. But speak yeah, it. So, um the the podcast I think would be I it it feels so aligned and I feel so called. Like clearly I don't shut up. So like I think the <laughs> podcast is gonna be a great outlet for that. But yes. also creating a space and um, you know, I've got my website launching here too at the same time. And um something that it says on that website is think Gabby Bernstein needs to call her daddy. And that is the most like on point on brand thing that I can possibly think of. Um, you know, the podcast is gonna, the tagline is manifestation, men and money. And I'm going to do it a lot differently than a lot of people are. Um, I want to blow the shit off this whole thing. I'm going to put myself on blast. 
I'm going to yes. share all the crazy ass stories that I have and what I've learned from them. We are going to talk about spirituality, but we're also going to talk about taking tequila shots and we're going to talk about, you know, relationships and how to manifest and money and, and creating businesses and doing it in a way that feels really good and authentic to you. I want this to be like, you know, my girlfriends and drinking over wine. I want you to feel like friends with me that we're chilling yes. and, you know, sitting on the couch and, and it's, it's something that is such an expander and it is uncomfortable for me because, um, you know, I had always showed up as half of myself online because I never felt like I was fully going to be accepted in, in who I am. And it's, it's funny because my friends, you know, that know me know yeah. that I'm, I'm out there and I'm different and I'm loud and I'm wild and free and, I love it. you know, and I do everything a bit afraid and, like I never fully shown up in that way and um, never told the stories that I am going to be telling on this podcast. And I'm really risking a lot of judgment here. Um, but I also know that it needs to be said. So that is probably the most, yes. the most biggest expander for me at the moment. Yeah. Oh my gosh, y'all. You better go follow Rachel Gibbler on Instagram because once this podcast launches, you are going to want to absorb every single episode. I mean, even the stories that she's told me, I'm like, I'm ready. Like I'm taking it all in. It's just so good. And Whew, I see she's doing it scared. And that's the other thing y'all that, that I really want you to get from this is like, you see these people online and they're like, Oh my gosh, like they're killing it. They're manifesting. They're in this abundance mindset, but it doesn't mean you're constantly in that you are always working towards it because your why is bigger than that, than, than any of your excuses or your fears. You're not going to let those hold back. And that's something that, that you really emulate in everything that you do, Rachel. So I'm so thankful Thank you. for you. Thank you for spending time with us today and guys, make sure you go follow her. Her, her podcast is launching. It's going to be sick. I can't wait. I'm going to grab a drink and listen to the first episode as soon as it launches, yes. but thank you. <laughs> so much for being here, Rachel. I so appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me and you guys definitely reach out. Thanks again for listening to Confidently Uncomfortable. I love being able to connect with you here and honestly don't want it to end. So head over to my Facebook group, Body Confident Blueprint, and be sure to follow me on Insta at Jago Fit Life. Also, if you're ready to get real confidently uncomfortable, Go leave this podcast a five-star review and email me the review screenshot support at jagofit360.com for a chance to win a free 30-minute fitness audit and goal-setting session. I appreciate your support. See you next time.